Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So for a more extensive review of the bug out roll and what exactly it is, you can go and check out one of the many videos I've done on the bug out roll through the links in the description, and you can get yourself a bug out roll at CanadianPreparedness.com. Currently we have a promotion on for the Forest Camel version of the roll. $199 Canadian for the main section, including the hard use Cordura and vinyl modular sections, which translates into about $150 American at the current exchange rate. We use the finest materials in order to make this roll heavy duty Cordura thick. 30 gauge vinyl, heavy duty YKK number 10 zippers, and it's made in Canada. This is a one of a kind system. You won't find anything like it anywhere else of the equivalent quality and craftsmanship. This thing has been designed by a prepper with longevity and durability in mind. All other colors of the rolls right now are at their standard prices, which are $135 Canadian for the main section and $40 and $48 respectively for the modular sections, meaning you're saving about 20 bucks if you go with a camel version, which in my personal opinion, once you get out into the forest, uh, the camel version just seems to blend in the most. But if you're wanting something for first aid, Maybe you're wanting something in the tactical black or if you're wanting something more gray man like the olive color then maybe those ones are for you. So check it out CanadianPreparedness.com So the strategy of the bug out rule is primarily to make your camping experience more manageable. The theory is that 90% of your time is going to be spent at base camp. Most backpacking systems primarily focus on ergonomics in order to get to the place where you need to get to. These systems fail in helping you manage your gear when you finally do get to your destination. The bug out roll when used by itself or in conjunction with other backpacking systems is going to drastically increase your ability to stay organized in the field. So although the bug out roll is made of a 1000 denier Cordura that doesn't mean it's waterproof. It is water resilient, but just like most backpacking systems, like 90% of them, they're not waterproof. So the bug out roll, because of its tubular design when rolled up, is very compatible with your standard dry bag. This is one by Sea Line. I believe this is the 30 liter Sea Line dry bag. The bug out roll, when fully maxed out, fits well in here. And there's a lot of room left in there if you want to stuff stuff down the side. So if you wanted to stuff a survival rifle, a takedown rifle, maybe a recurve bow like the SAS takedown bow. And of course you have enough room on top for a variety of different types of food. So all in all, I'd say this sucker right now weighs about 25 to 30 pounds. So it's fully loaded out, fully maxed out. So we're going to take it out and we're going to see what's inside. And there's the roll. So I'm going to hang this up on a tree because that is the preferred orientation of this roll system. The whole purpose of it is to make camp life easier by making your gear accessible and well organized and quickly able to identify. But before we do that, let's unroll it on the ground. So to undo the roll, it's a five point locking system to ensure that all your gear is kept securely in there. Now we've recently moved to more robust buckles. That's one thing about the bug out roll system is that although it's been very fine tuned, we're always finding little ways to tweak it over time. So to undo it, simply go like that, unlash those three points. There's these two that wrap around the back like so, and then you simply undo your roll. Now most of your gear should stay securely in there. Obviously when you unroll it, you wanna be careful. The majority of the compartments on the roll have very heavy duty YKK number 10 zippers that keep them together. So all that stuff's gonna be well contained and encapsulated with the exception of two pockets 
that we wanted to keep open for quick access. Now, a couple people have asked us why we didn't put zippers on all the sections and why we have two open sections here. I'm gonna talk a bit about the rationale for that. There is a very good reason that I'll get into in a moment. All right, so as you can see, I've unrolled the roll and I've hung it up on this tree. Hangs on any branch by this fairly large, durable loop. Again, this is a modular system. So if I just wanted one pouch with me somewhere around the campsite, simply take it off as this industrial strength Velcro that's gonna hold it on there. This in itself is probably seven or eight pounds. So to give you an idea of how much weight the Velcro can hold, if I wanna put it back on there, simply adhere it on there like so. That's a very thick strip of Velcro. So it's gonna stand up to a lot of abuse. And the same goes for this section here. This is also a detachable modular section. Now in the future, we're gonna offer other modules which are gonna offer different styles of compartmentalization. They're still gonna be backwards compatible with your roll. So if you do purchase one of these rolls and down the road, we introduce another module, it will be compatible with the main roll system that you have. As previously demonstrated, these individual pouches are also standalone in that they will roll into themselves and the Velcro will adhere to itself, making a mini roll. You don't need to order the whole bug out system. You can order individual compartments for organizing your backpack system. So what I've designed here is something that could be a standalone bug out system. Now there's a variety of different ways that you might want to use this roll. You could use it for a first aid kit, you could use it just to organize your camping supplies. You could use it for an I'm never coming home bag. So a long-term disaster preparedness bag. And for that, it might just be supplementary to your main bug out bag system. Now you can put this inside a backpack. You can adhere it to a larger hiking pack. You can strap it onto the exterior of that. If you have a hiking trailer like the Mono Walker, this is perfectly compatible with something of that nature. And of course, there's a handle if you need to carry it short distances. Works very well out of the back of a vehicle or a pickup truck. So I make this video not only to show you a nifty collection of bug out bag items that you might not have thought of, but also to give you some ideas as to how you can use your roll. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down in terms of the contents of the roll. You have these big, heavy-duty YKK zipper pulls here. You can customize them to your heart's content. Right here, you can see I have a whistle, compass, thermometer combo on it. You can put whatever you want on there, paracord fobs. Uh, they're really good in the winter time because they're so big. So if you have winter gloves on, this vinyl is ultraviolet resistant, and it's also cold crack resistant for winter time. All of the stitching here is double stitched to ensure that this zipper uh, from constantly opening and closing it is not going to create unnecessary wear and tear. So within this section here, I have a few things. So I have a Fresnel lens, a small Fresnel lens. I have the SAS survival guide. I have a how-to guide for tying knots. Very small one, 11 essential knots. And I'm using this Yuko Titan stormproof match container to house a variety of different sized matches. Some are more storm and weatherproof than others. All right, so moving over here, this is more text related stuff, but I have the Olight H2R Nova, puts out 2300 lumens, it's a headlamp, probably one of the most versatile lamps you can get. And I have the strap in a different part of the roll system, the perfect bug out big light because it is just so multi-purpose. Now it doesn't have a spot feature, so it's not gonna be a great spotlight, but for most bug out scenarios, you're mostly gonna be needing a floodlight. So that's the purpose of that. I also have an extra battery. This light has onboard USB charging, and I have a power pack here that stores up to 13,000 milliamps of power. It's very durable as well. And I have an antenna for my TechSoon shortwave radio, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. Now over here, I have the backpack GPS. It's a standalone GPS unit, runs on one AAA battery. And I have a couple extra AAA batteries, lithium. I also have some reflective tape in there. This is made by a company called GearAid. 
This uh, is gonna just allow for high visibility at long ranges. So a great way to signal for help. I also have a signal mirror in here. So a lot of the stuff in this section here is gonna be for navigation, optics, and signaling. So we have a standard Lensatic Coleman compass just in case the GPS fails. We also have a right in the rain notepad, a Brutton Eco Zoom monocular, which I believe is up to 55 times magnification. However, the field of view is very small. So at some point I may consider switching that out, but in this small form factor, that's pretty much the best field of view that you're gonna get at that magnification. All right, so in this section, I keep a lot of things for personal hygiene and cooking. So we'll just open this up. Now this is a 10 liter ultralight water container. So it folds up. It's called the Ultra Sill Sea to Summit Kitchen Sink. Very good thing to have because it's, it's fine and dandy to have one of those little water filters like I have here, but you're gonna want some way to transport large amounts of water just for convenience sake. And this is gonna allow you to store a significant amount of water and transport it over a large region. Say your campsite is, you know, however far from a source of water, you're gonna to wanna to be able to transport that water with relative ease. So this item right here is a portable pocket shower. How this works is you hang this from a tree. This in itself can hold 10 liters of water. So it's another great way to uh, store your water. Now it's made in a black color to attract the sun's light. And I've had to use these before and they really do work quite well. If you let them charge up in the sun for a few hours, you're gonna get yourself a reasonably warm shower. So a very good thing to have. And uh, like it says here, seven minute shower. And I would attest to that. It does actually last a surprisingly long time. I also have some aqua tabs in here. Personally, this is my preferred choice of water purification just because it's the easiest. You just put one of these tabs in your water bottle and you basically instantly have drinking water while well, they say you're supposed to wait 20 minutes or something like that. But for the most part, you get, uh, it's one of the easiest ways to purify water without a filtration process. I have some instant coffee mix in there and this is a, what's called a survivor filter. So this is a three stage filtration system and this is going to basically filter out uh, bacteria. They say it filters out viruses. I'm not too confident about its ability to filter out viruses. And there's also an active carbon filter aspect. So it's gonna filter out a lot of those nasty chemicals as well. Now, right here, I have a nice little container of salt. Not only is this good for hydration and just to keep your electrolytes up, uh, it's also gonna make whatever food you catch, particularly fish, and small game a lot more tasty. So a little bottle of salt is, is a great thing to have in your bug out bag. Most people, for whatever reason, don't put salt in your bug out bag, I would encourage you to. Especially if you come across some food which is less than desirable, this might just spice it up and make it a bit more palatable. Also have some wilderness wash. This stuff is biodegradable and it's environmentally friendly. Obviously in a real survival situation, you're not gonna be too concerned about being an environmentalist, you know, but for the sake of preserving nature in its most purest form, I would recommend using things that are biodegradable. Also some lip medics. Uh, lip balm is gonna be absolutely essential. You'll be surprised at how handy uh, some chapstick can come in when you're out there in the wilderness. If you're in very hot conditions or if you're around a fire a lot, trying to keep warm. Now I have some of my toilet paper tablets here. I made a video on these, has 2.5 million views, go check it out. I have some isogel, puril, alcohol. So not only can this be used for fire starting, but also for sanitation purposes. There's a toothbrush in there, a fork. There's some other compressed towels. I have some of these whizzy wipes or toilet paper tablets in this waterproof container. Now they make these for matches, but you can use these little containers for whatever you want. So I'll post links to all this stuff in the description. I also have this cool thing that I came across at Cabela's and this is the massive wet wipe. It's something like 31 inches by 19 inches. So if you ever had to take a quick emergency shower or get clean or something like that, this could very well come in handy. Now this is obviously not an essential item. 
and I might consider taking this out because I do have a chamois right here, uh, which I'll be using mostly as a camp towel, but um, that could come in handy for sure. All right, like I said, I have a camp chamois. It's just a very generally multi-purpose and very durable portable towel system. Dry yourself off, whatever the case might be. So it could be very handy, especially in rainy conditions. This is a folding water bottle by Vapor. One of the biggest pains you're gonna have is if you only have one of these survivor filters and you have no container to put water in and move it around and make it easily accessible to drink. This is gonna do that. And this is gonna allow you to use those tablets that I was talking about earlier. Also in here, I have some mosquito coils. Now in the Canadian wilderness, protection from the bugs is gonna be absolutely crucial because it will drive you insane. If it doesn't drive you insane, it's gonna increase your stress level drastically, which is gonna to lead to poor decision-making, which could potentially mean the difference between life or death. So mosquito coils, this amount is gonna last a long time if well rationed. This is probably several days worth of mosquito coil right here, and you could probably easily stretch it out over the course of a few weeks if you had to. I have some work gloves in there as well. And you can see that the things in this section are things that you might want instantly to be accessible. So I have gloves in there. You know, you're gonna be using your gloves around the campsite a lot. It's just nice to have, you know, a spot like that where you can instantly put stuff into if you need to. All right, so over here, this is more medical oriented stuff. This is another section that you're gonna to wanna to have readily accessible. If you cut yourself, you don't wanna be undoing zippers with one hand, things of that nature, although you could, you wanna make it as easily accessible as possible. I have some Curad antiviral face masks. These are the only masks that are certified to actually kill viruses. So I'll post a link to those in the description. They actually inactivate flu viruses. Other masks don't actually kill the virus upon contact with the mask. Those viruses are still alive on the exterior of that mask, but these actually kill the virus. I have some hot hands in here. I have some tin foil for cooking as well. I just, that should probably go in here. I have some small Ziploc bags for collecting wild edibles, herbs, stuff like that. See, this is a body warmer, some larger gauze pads, bandages. I have some quick clock coagulant for those major medical emergencies where a person's bleeding out and uh, you need a clotting agent. In the wilderness, there's a variety of different ways to contract a bacterial infection. So I keep enough amoxicillin in here to treat one major bacterial infection. And I should add that this amoxicillin is actually fish mox, so it's fish antibiotics, but there's many, many videos on fish mox. It's pretty much the exact same stuff as what they prescribe to human beings, only it's re readily available over the counter. I should also add that these are in mylar bags, they're non-porous, they're gonna allow the medication to last a bit longer, but don't quote me on that. This is not FDA approved. I also have caffeine pills, just some more heat packets, some more bandages. You can't have enough bandages. Believe it or not, a bandage could mean the difference between life and death. I mean, it could mean the difference of keeping a wound clean and it getting dirty and getting infected. So like I said, I have a little bottle of hand sanitizer here, so that's gonna clean wounds as well. So that would be my wound cleaning agent. I'm not a medical expert. So indeed, this is part of the system which could be improved. Now I do have a whole roll which is just first aid supplies. So this is a very, very condensed first aid kit and I still need to fine tune it a little bit more. There's still a few little things I could add in there. All right, so the firearm that I've chosen is the Schiappa M6 survival rifle. You can actually fit the Henry AR repeating arm survival rifle in one of these larger pouches down here that I'm gonna talk about, but I keep the Schiappa M6 survival rifle in there. Now I don't keep it in the roll itself because it's a little too big to fit in there, but I do keep it along the side walls of that dry bag that I showed you earlier. So these are great pockets for ammunition. They're very durable pockets. They protrude out about an inch and a half to two inches. Perfect for shotgun rounds or 
for any sort of ammunition that you might want to throw in there. So right now I'm using 20 gauge. So I have some 20 gauge buckshot and 20 gauge slugs in there. And for the 22 Magnum part of the gun, I have 50 rounds of 22 Magnum. Fits nice and snug in there. Now coming over here to the comm section, you could put walkie talkies in here. I have a Baofeng ham radio, just your bare bones entry level radio. I'm considering stepping this up a notch because this is not USB rechargeable. So the only way I could recharge this is in the, in the field is if I had the actual dock that this goes in and then I would need a way to power that via AC adapter. So it's good enough for here because this is in my truck and my truck has all the things I need to charge. But if I don't have the truck, then uh, that's gonna be useless after the battery dies. Now, this is the Texon shortwave radio. Uh, great little radio and does shortwave, weather band, FM and AM radio. This one, you put rechargeable batteries in it and you can actually recharge the batteries inside via mini USB. Now, I, just for the sake of redundancy, I threw in an extra S1R baton flashlight. This is a 900 lumen flashlight, runs on one CR123 battery, lithium ion. It has the tail cap recharging. So this is charged by the same tail cap uh, USB recharger as the other Olight flashlight I showed you earlier. I'm moving over here. I just have some more pills in there. I have some Tylenol and some Advil in this pill container. Here I have a bear banger. Here I have some fat rope. I'm gonna be doing another video on the fat rope. It's great stuff. I'll post a link in the description where you can get some of this stuff. One of the most versatile fire starters you can get. This right here could probably start 50 fires, if not more, if I needed to. I could probably start 100 fires just with what I have here. So this is very good stuff. And in a, in a pinch, if you needed a quick fire in an emergency, this in itself is gonna burn. You could probably make it last for about 20 minutes, long enough to cook some food or get some tinder or some kindling, which was really wet, dry enough to start a fire. So this is a speedy sharp sharpener. It can sharpen your blades. It's not the best sharpener. You don't wanna use this on really expensive blades. Although if you're in a survival situation, you have no choice, but um, it's also good for throwing sparks off a ferrocium rod. So excellent little uh, sharpener to have in your bug out kit. This is just a very large half inch thick ferrocium rod. I've done a review on an inch thick ferrocium rod, which would be way overkill for something like this. But uh, by all means, this is definitely a good thing to have in there. And there's a striker. Also have a Sharpie marker in there just for maybe writing notes, for leaving messages for charting with the right in the rain notepad. I also forgot to put in a pencil. I just realized that. So that would be something useful to have. So I'm gonna cut the video here because it's getting a little long and we're gonna save the rest for part two, which should be out in a few days. Don't forget, you can support the channel and get yourself one of the most unique backpacking systems available right now, which is the bug out roll at canadianpreparedness.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out.